Okay, so if you're a guitar player, there's a pretty good chance that at some point you are going to travel with your guitar. Whether you're a professional touring musician who's on the road every week, or you're going on vacation with your family and you wanna take your favorite acoustic with you to play at the beach, at some point you are probably going to take your favorite guitar out on the road with you. Now this is something that I've done a lot over the years and I've learned a few things that have helped me keep my guitars safe and intact so that when I get to where I'm going, they are in tune, in good shape and ready to play. So in today's video, we're talking about traveling with guitars. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks to travel safely with your instruments, as well as talk about the differences between hard cases and gig bags. And I'm even gonna tell you a few different ways to make sure you get your guitar on the plane when you're flying. So before we get started, be sure to subscribe down below and ring the bell icon so you can be notified when I'm posting new videos and going live here on the channel. Let's get started. Now, before we jump into tips and tricks and how to travel with guitars, let's talk about cases, specifically gig bags versus hard cases. Now, some people are apprehensive about using a gig bag to travel with, and that's because when I use the term gig bag, a lot of people think about something like this. And technically, this is a gig bag, but I would not use this for anything. I wouldn't even go down to a local bar gig in town with something like this for a few reasons. One, this offers no support for the neck or headstock. It also doesn't offer any type of crush protection. As you can see, if you had any type of hollow body or semi hollow guitar in here and something fell on it, that would not be good. Now, if you compare that to some heavier duty gig bags, like the mono case here, this offers a lot more protection in the neck area and even goes so far as to provide a neck block system in there that holds the neck and headstock of the guitar in place. It's also quite a bit stiffer than the other case was. So it gives you some crush protection and they have something that they call the boot on the bottom of these cases, which is a thick rubber pad that protects the bottom and the strap mount on the back of your guitar. Now, it's worth mentioning that Mono is sponsoring this video. They're not paying for this video, but they did send me two cases to check out, both this Vertigo and their new Stealth bag, but all of the opinions and viewpoints in this video are my own. Now, recently Mono just released this. This is the Stealth bag, and this is a lighter weight, slimmer option for people that are doing some light traveling. I probably wouldn't fly with this bag, but if you are playing around town or if you're a student and you're going to and from class every day, a bag like this is a really cool option. It's extremely lightweight. It's thin and low profile. It's also got a pocket here for cables and a laptop or tablet sleeve, and they still have their neck protection in this case as well. Now, whether you're using a gig bag or a hard case, the most important thing is how well your guitar fits inside the case. You want a nice snug fit. You don't want the guitar moving around and you certainly don't want the neck or the headstock to be able to move around inside the case, especially if you've got something like a Les Paul or a guitar with an angled headstock. You wanna find a case that's going to fit your guitar really, really well. Now, if you're not a gig bag guy, hard cases are still a great option. And most mid-level to high-end guitars that you buy nowadays come with really nice, well-made hard cases. This is a classic Les Paul case. And quite frankly, this is something that I would feel confident traveling with. I would feel comfortable putting this case on a plane. Not checked, we'll get to that in a second. Now there's no question that hard cases offer plenty of protection for your instrument. They are rigid, which gives you nice crush and puncture protection. And if it's an original case like this Les Paul, for example, it's going to be made to custom fit the guitar. But personally, there's a few reasons that I don't like to travel with hard cases. 
first and foremost, when it's something like this, an original hard shell case that came with a guitar, I wanna keep this thing in mint condition because cases are high wear items. They're going to wear out. They're gonna get dinged up and scratched and torn up. And when you have the original hard shell case with your guitar in mint condition, it helps the resale value and it's kind of a nice item to have. So for that reason, I never travel with the original hard shell cases that I have with any of my instruments. And so as a result, I have a few aftermarket hard shell cases like this carbon fiber Hoffy case, which is custom made for an ES-335. Now there's no question, this is the most robust and protective case I own. I mean, the thing's everything but bomb proof. But the reality is I haven't used this case in over three years. And that's because when I'm traveling with my guitars, I'm never just bringing my guitars. I've got a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm bringing with me. I've got instrument cables and in-ear monitors and straps and capos and slides and strings and string winders and neck braces. And so I need a place to put all of that stuff. And for me, a gig bag allows me to carry everything, my entire kit in one easy to use, easy to carry protective case that I can get on and off an airplane with and through an airport quickly and easily. So now we've covered different types of cases and how to find the right case for you. Let's actually talk about traveling with guitars, specifically flying with guitars, because I feel like most people are nervous about going through airports and security and on and off airplanes with their guitars. And for good reason, it can be a really stressful situation. But there's a few things that I'll share with you that'll make that process a lot easier and a lot less stressful, starting with with booking your flights. Now, with what I do for a living, I fly a lot. And most times I'm on an airplane, I have guitars with me. And one thing that I've learned is to pick the right airline, or better yet, don't pick the wrong airline, specifically United Airlines and American Airlines. Now, on multiple occasions, I've had bad experiences with United and American when I've flown with guitars. There have been gate agents that have given me an attitude when I ask about about getting my guitars on the plane and not having to gate check them. I've had flight attendants be rude with me about trying to get my guitars in the overhead bins. Overall, I've had really bad experiences with both of those airlines, and as a result, I will no longer fly on either one of those airlines, both for business or for personal travel at all. So now I'm gonna share some tips and tricks with you that I've found through years of flying with guitars to help you get through the airport as quickly and painlessly as possible, all without having to check your guitars. So once you've booked your flights, you wanna see if there's a way that you can be one of the first people to board the plane. This way you can be sure that there's gonna be an overhead bin available for your guitars before everyone else comes on the airplane. Now. With certain airlines like Southwest, that means checking in at the right time, exactly 24 hours before your flight. And some other airlines might ask you to pay a slight fee to be one of the first people to board. In either case, it's worth setting a reminder in your phone reminding you to check in on time or paying the 20 to 30 bucks extra it might cost so that you can get your guitars on the plane and not have to check them at the gate. Now, once your flights are booked and your travel plans are all made, it's time to get ready to actually head to the airport. And this starts with packing your guitars. Now, one thing that you don't wanna do is overpack. You don't wanna carry too much stuff through the airport because in your case, it's gonna be heavy. It's gonna be a huge pain in the butt. And depending on what type of case you have, it could mean that you have stuff rattling around inside the case alongside the guitar. If you're like me though, and and you're traveling for a gig, try and pare down your kit to the bare essentials that you need to get through the gig. The next thing you wanna do is avoid packing any items that security might find suspicious. Now, obviously, you're not gonna bring any knives or weapons in your guitar case, but certain types of string winders or multi-tools can look weird under an X-ray, which would trigger a specific search by a TSA agent. Also, things like this nut slot lubricant here is something I would definitely leave at home because that just looks super sketchy. Now, once you get to the airport, the most important thing, and this probably goes without saying, you don't want to check your guitar with your checked luggage. 
Who knows what happens in the maze of conveyor belts and baggage handlers and what it takes to actually get your luggage from the front desk to the airplane and then back to you after your flight. I can tell by what my luggage looks like after a flight that putting a guitar through that, no matter how good your case is, is probably not the best idea. So what this means is I always carry my guitar through security, through the airport and on to the plane. This way, if the guitar does have to be checked, it gets checked at the gate where there's only one, maybe two people handling the guitar rather than going through all of God knows what behind the scenes at the airport. Now I have had to gate check a handful of times and it is a little nerve wracking every time I have to do it. But luckily every time the guitars have come back to me unscathed and most times they don't even go to baggage claim. Somebody will hand deliver the guitar to me on the jetway when we land. Now my next tip is for getting through security as painlessly as possible. If you live in the United States, we have something called TSA pre-check. And quite frankly, this is something that I think is worth signing up for just in general. It makes going through security so much easier. You don't have to take your shoes off. You don't have to take your belt off. If you travel with electronics, you don't have to pull those out of the bag. So for me, I just go through the TSA pre-check line, throw my guitar case on the conveyor belt, send it through the x-ray machine and pick it up on the other side. Most times the guitar makes it through security with no extra checks needed by a TSA agent. And again, this goes back to the tip I gave you a second ago, leave all your sketchy looking stuff out of the guitar case. However, if they do decide to check the guitar by hand, the best thing you can do is stay calm, polite, and courteous to the TSA agent while they're looking through your case. I understand it can be nerve wracking or even slightly annoying to have some random person digging through your guitar case, but don't overreact, don't be a jerk, just be calm, quiet, answer any questions they may have, and the process will be over before you know it, as long as you're not carrying anything, you know, sketchy in your case. Now, once I'm through security and make it to the gate, there's one thing that I like to do to make sure I'm one of the first people that gets on the plane with my guitars. And that is to politely ask the gate agent if I can be one of the first boarding groups because I have an instrument with me. Now, the most important part of this is how you ask the gate agent. You don't wanna come in there and be like, oh, hey, you know how expensive this guitar is? It's worth X amount of dollars and uh, I think you should let me on the plane. Instead, I like to say something along the lines of if you'd let me i'd love the opportunity to be one of the first people to board the airplane since i have a guitar with me that would be fantastic and like i said most times that actually works now my next few tips are for when you're actually boarding the airplane when you make it to the end of the jetway before i step on the plane i always take my gig bag off my shoulders and hold it in front of me. We all know how cramped airplanes are today and trying to walk down the aisle with the gig bag on your back can be kind of a pain in the butt and actually rude to the other passengers because you can have the gig bag bumping into them while they're sitting in their seats. And this will also prevent you from having to do that thing where you find an overhead compartment and trying to take the bag off in that super cramped environment. It's just better to get on the plane with your case in front of you. Now, as soon as I get on the airplane, I always like to kindly address the flight attendants and ask them if they have a coat closet available on the plane to put my guitars in. If you're traveling on a slightly larger plane, most of those planes will have a coat closet. And most of the time, the only thing in those coat closets are some of the flight attendants spare uniforms. So essentially what you have is your guitar's own private compartment to travel in for the duration of the flight. Now, if you're on a smaller domestic flight, oftentimes those planes don't have coat closets, so you will have to go with the overhead bin. But if you're flying cross country or internationally, most of those planes do have multiple coat closets, and that is the best way to get your guitar on the airplane. And my last tip is when you finally make it to your destination, whether you're flying or you're taking the road is always bring your guitars into the hotel or Airbnb with you. This may sound self-explanatory, but there's a lot of people I know who have had gear stolen out of trailers or the back of vans because they thought it was okay to leave their instruments in the trailer overnight. It's amazing how quick someone can grab a case and walk off with a guitar. So you always want to be intentional about keeping your instrument with you 
if not at all times, as much as you can. So there you go. Those are my tips and tricks for traveling with guitars. How do you like to travel with guitars? And are you a gig bag person or a hard case person? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you'd like some more information on the mono cases I used in this video, those will be linked in the description box down below. If you buy through one of those links, I get a small commission from Amazon, which really helps me out in making these videos. If you'd like to directly support the channel, check out the green room, which is linked in the description box down below. You can also find some links to my favorite gear that I use to record and make these videos. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informational. I'm Rhett Schull. Thanks for watching. And remember, there is no plan B.